Good evening. Thank you very much, Bibi. I'm very happy to host you here in my humble house. Uh, and I'm very happy for this meeting. We had already important talks in Jerusalem some uh, uh, two months ago. It was my first visit there, and it was very important. Uh, you received me in a very warm way, and I never forget. Of course, it's very important that we are working together. We are preparing our bilateral uh, G2G meeting because we want to strengthen our bilateral, first of all, economic, political, and cultural relationships. Of course, we are uh, very, very much interested in uh, our common concerns. We are sharing the same engagement in stabilizing the Mediterranean and the Middle East. And, uh, of course, today we are uh, very much worried about uh, what's happening in the Mediterranean, all the migrations. We will have a European Council on Thursday and Friday for discussing how Europe can deal with these new, very, very difficult problems, refugees and so on. But, of course, the uh, Middle East peace process for us is one of the most important uh, missions, goals, achievements. And I know that tomorrow you will meet uh, Secretary Kerry. We are very happy uh, about your choice of being in Rome for having these meetings. Rome is a city of peace. And uh, I hope that uh, discussing in Rome will be something of positive. And, of course, we discussed uh, already in, uh, in Jerusalem about uh, the situation in Syria. We share the same common goal to arrive to a stabilization there, to arrive uh, to a Geneva too, and to have there a peace process without the war and without all this uh, disaster that there is happening. So, um, I would like uh, to, to thank you and to, uh, to stress really how important for us is the good bilateral relationship we have. It's a very important common activity. We have uh, the, the, the meeting, the G2G meeting will be a success, I'm sure. And uh, thank you for, for being here, Bibi. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Prime Minister Letta and Rico, thank you for uh, inviting me to this humble <laughs> abode. It's magnificent. It's always good to come here. It's always good when you come to Israel. Uh, we have a strong friendship. We're uh, intensifying it just about in every field. And I look forward to our bilateral uh, meetings, the G2G, because I think we can further strengthen it in every field. And we are cooperating as never before. Um, you can see that in the numbers, but you can see it also in the spirit. Uh, and it's, uh, it's something that I value, uh, as I value some courageous decisions that you had to take. It's not easy. I've been there uh, on occasion. Uh, and uh, I heard your words against populism. Populism is the easiest position to take, and to stand against it is not easy. And therefore, um, I respect people and leaders who do it as you do. Uh, equally, uh, we are interested, all of us, in seeing peace and stability in this region. Uh, this is one of the reasons, one of the two main reasons that I uh, came here to speak to Secretary Kerry tomorrow, obviously to discuss uh, the Palestinian-Israeli peace talks, but equally also to touch on something that could uh, affect these peace talks uh, in a way that uh, would be overwhelming, overwhelmingly good or overwhelmingly bad. If Iran succeeds in its quest uh, to achieve nuclear weapons, that will be very, very bad. If you track what Iran has been doing since 2006, it had about 170 centrifuges. By the end of this year, it will have about 20,000 centrifuges. So it's gone more than a 100% increase, more than a 100 times increase. 
of centrifuges that are used for one purpose only, and that is to advance their nuclear weapons program. Equally, they've, uh, they're accelerating the development of their heavy water uh, plutonium reactor. It has only one purpose, to build nuclear weapons. Iran says it wants a deal in which they have civilian nuclear energy. That's not the issue, because many, many countries in Europe, in North America, in Asia, have civilian nuclear energy without centrifuges, without plutonium. The only reason Iran insists on centrifuges and plutonium is to be able to build enough fissile material to make atomic bombs. This is why the UN Security Council uh, has made repeated decisions, including the latest one in 2010 that said to Iran, dismantle your centrifuges, dismantle your plutonium production. I think this is the right thing to do. I think leaving Iran with plutonium and centrifuge enrichment capability means that we leave it with a capacity to rush to the bomb. Not a good idea. Uh, they can do that from low enrichment, from 3.5%, right to 90%. They don't need now the interim step of uh, 20% that I drew as a red line in the UN because in the ensuing year, they created basically a pole vault capability. They can go right from low enrichment, from 3.5% to 90% in weeks. They shouldn't be allowed to do that. I stress that because our quest for peace, our desire to see a change in the Middle East, the desire that we and you, Israel and Italy share, we and many of the Arabs share, could be overwhelmed if Iran succeeds at this point, when it's so close to economic collapse, when it's so close to the point where the sanctions are working, if they succeed in getting out of it, it will be tragic, because we have now the way to make sure that they don't have atomic weapons capability, that they cannot uh, produce nuclear weapons, and we can achieve this peacefully. This is something that I, I'll continue to talk with you, and I assure you I'll talk about it with John Kerry tomorrow uh, at great length. Uh, I just did that here. I thank you for your patience and your friendship, and I thank you for your hospitality. It's uh, deeply, deeply appreciated. Thank you, Enrico. Thank you. Thank you.